Hi guys, so a couple of videos ago I had a request to film myself making a product from start to finish. So today I have decided to treat you all to a little behind the scenes peek at exactly what goes into making a card. So right the way back to the beginning when I am sketching out ideas for them to designing the card that bit definitely takes the longest to inputting it into my graphic design software, printing, cutting and the final product. So I hope you enjoy this one and let's get into it. I always find it easier to start with the text that I have planned for the cards. It means that I'm able to work the design around it. So here you'll see me adding it onto Procreate and then I'm just having a look at different fonts and messing around, tweaking the layout until I'm happy with it. I find it easier to have a themed colour just to start with rather than leaving it in black and here I had decided that I would try and attempt a little bit of freehand using the actual font as a stencil. I'm having a play with the different brushes and I am now just moving on. I really like this pink and green colour combo and I quite think that the love looks like a bit of a lipstick, you know like when you write on the mirror. So at the moment I'm not too sure whether or not this is the font that I'm going to keep but for now it's got the right colours and the right sizing that I would like for the card design so I'm just going to keep it as it is and then start building around it. Because I'm going for a floral reef design it's easier if I have a template to draw my flowers around so I have gone for more of an oval shape that's just going to go around the text itself and then it allows me to layer up on top of that. For my flowers I've gone for a kind of folk art simple style and you may have noticed that I've just turned the symmetry on here on Procreate that will allow me to duplicate whatever I'm drawing on one side and it just speeds up the process and it makes sure that you've got a nice even and symmetrical picture. going through now and building up different style stylized flowers and here I've got more of a daisy print and because it looks a little bit bland at the moment just having the petals and the inside bit I'm now going around and just adding to that with lots of different patterns now I've turned on so it's not just the symmetry it's more of a rotational symmetry and I'm just making sure that my artwork is in the middle so that when I come to draw things in like circles and dots it means that they are centralized and will meet up rather than being slightly off center. I start with all of my sketches in a just plain color and I like to use the pencil um, for all of my initial sketching work and um, with here I am making the flowers all different colors because when it comes to moving the layers and resizing them all later on it's going to make it a bit easier to see exactly what I'm doing and the small little layer pane window. So the good thing about folk art flowers is that anything really goes um, you will see me tweaking the design of each of the flowers and just getting it to a point that I am happy with. So now I'm checking through all of the different flowers that I have drawn and it's time to start scaling them all down. I am adding in the vines as well and just having a little bit of a play around. My plan is to have the right hand side mimicked or mirrored I should say from the left. So that means that I need to make sure that everything is sized out correctly and eventually I will be adding vine work to it as well. So it's a case of duplicating each of the different flower layers and then just sizing them down until they're at a size that I am happy with and just bearing in mind all the time that eventually this whole image will be mirrored so I need to make sure that everything works really well together and just cutting and pasting, tweaking just the rotational angles as well just on my sketched flowers to start with. 
So I've actually changed my mind on that flower that was there. It looked a bit like an insect and it wasn't really the vibe that I was going for. So I deleted that off and just inserted another one instead. I actually drew too many flowers and it's meant that I'm not going to need them all. So I'm having a bit of a play around and just keeping the ones that I like the most and just tweaking it all until I am happy with the overall design, making sure that it doesn't look too busy, but that it is still nice and full. Sometimes I will go back onto the sketch layers and just again tweak the initial sketch to make it a little bit more um, in keeping with the style that I'm going for. I didn't really think that those triangles worked and instead I've gone for more of a heart as I think that it obviously is a bit more in keeping with the let love bloom sentiment of the card. Once that was all done, I had a look and added in the vine work. I wasn't happy with the font that I had chosen. It was just a bit clumsy, a bit bulky. So I've gone back through all of the commercial fonts that, I've, that I own and I found one that I quite like. So I'm now just tweaking the layout and making sure that love is the main focus of the quote. I'm turning down the transparency on all of my layers now because I'm about to start adding the colour in and when it's a bit too um, vivid at 100% it makes it a bit difficult to sketch over the top so if you turn the opacity down it just means that you can just sketch over the top of it a little bit easier and you can see exactly what you're doing. I have a colour palette that I have chosen for this design so it means that all of the flowers and all of the text is going to just be colours from that palette. It just makes sure that everything works cohesively together. Um, you can find lots of commercial colour palettes online that you can download for Procreate or you can use your own. So I am using the fill tool for um, speed for all of these and I like to ensure that my lines are nice and stable by holding them down and then just tweaking the arc or the line or whatever it is that I'm drawing. So you can see me just kind of messing with the nodes there just to make sure that everything looks nice and clear. I really, really love this pink and red or dark red color combo, combo here it looks really nice and I think it helps with the green to really pop so I've made sure that I've turned on the symmetry whilst I'm drawing because what I am drawing on the left and coloring in will be duplicated on the right it just saves time and it also makes sure that the image is more clear rather than if you just copy paste and flip you will lose some of the resolution and you'll find that it may look a little bit pixelated so if you are going to mirror your image it's definitely better to do it manually rather than copying and pasting. The whole process from start to finish of designing and colouring this design has taken me close to four and a half hours. Um, it's quite a slow process that doesn't include the initial time where I was sketching out designs to decide on this actual card design itself. So it's something that I like to do if I am listening to an audiobook or if I've got YouTube or something on in the background and it just allows me to kind of get down deep into the design work and not worry about how much time it's taking me to do. You'll see a few times my low battery has popped up as I said because it's taken me almost five hours it does mean that either the Apple Pencil battery tends to run low or the actual iPad Pro itself so sometimes I'll work with it plugged in but I just find that I prefer to be curled up in a nice comfy chair or on the sofa when I'm drawing like this because of the length of time involved and I know it's not great for posture but it's definitely um, something that I like to do with a nice cup of tea and yeah just get all cozy it helps me to get into a more creative space if I'm comfortable rather than sat at a traditional table and chair. The colours that I've chosen for this palette are quite uh, punchy, earthy colours. So there's blues and greens and oranges and reds. And it's 
just seems to work very well in harmony together. This is actually a palette that I have used before. It's definitely one of my favorites. I just think that it has a nice folk art style to it. Everything is very bold and just nice and vibrant. So So I have finished all of the sketching in of the flowers and now I am moving on to the vine work. I actually decided to tweak it slightly from the initial sketch work because I found that the vines were just too thick and it looked a bit clumsy. So I decided to go with a smaller stroke. You can see me here tweaking the nodes and just making sure that I'm happy with the thickness and the angle of everything before I lay it all down. There is a lot of undoing and redoing work when it comes to designing just to make sure that I am completely happy with it before I finish off. So here I am tweaking the angle ever so slightly and making sure that I mirror the angle on the other side as well so it all completely matches. And now I've popped symmetry back on again and I am just going through all of that vine work and making sure that it is all flowing nicely and all of the flowers are joined on and yeah I'm just coming up to the final parts now. You can see here that I have actually tweaked the initial design on that blue and green flower here. I wasn't keen on the busy patterns on it before so I just decided to scale it back and make it a little bit more simple. Now you can see I am so close to finishing it is just adding in those final flourishes just adjusting the little bits of vines that I wasn't happy with and making sure that all of my curves are nice and even um, especially with the brush stroke so that when you look at it there's nothing that looks too obvious that it's out of place. I did toy with the idea of going over the Let Love Bloom text and trying to freehand it, but I decided that it would be much better to just keep the actual commercial font. That's why I've purchased it so that I can use it in um, my products as I sell. But I just decided to go with a nice green because I think it looks so much better than the black. Now I am putting it into a card and I use Affinity Designer and you can see me using one of my preset printed card templates and now it's time to print. So I am printing first of all on my seed card and then I am going to tweak all of the settings to make sure that it prints exactly in the middle of the card for when it's folded. And I seem to be having a bit of a problem when I come to printing out the non-seeded card on my Canon. I keep getting some strange marks. So you can see me going back in here trying to manually clip the transparency. I had also noticed that I hadn't put any instructions for planting the card on the actual seeded card design. So I'm going through here now and using a template that I already have for my teacher cards and just adjusting it going back through and printing it out now you see me here having to manually tease the card out because it's very bulky it's actually made from waste cotton and if it goes at the wrong angle then it will drag on the seeds and won't print properly what a palaver so as you have just seen trying to print that new design out has been a bit of a nightmare so anything that i've actually put on the um Epson printer has come out absolutely beautiful, colours are fantastic and let me just show you the seeded card as well, that's all wonderful. However, when I am using my new um, Canon printer, I'm getting some lovely weird boxes. So this isn't the first time it's happened but um, I have done the usual trick which is to clip the transparency and that should work 
Um, it's definitely a Canon issue because as I've just shown you, the Epson is absolutely fine. So I am going to have to head over to my usual Facebook groups such as the Indie Roller and try and ask if anybody else has had anything like this and if there is a workaround because the seeded cards are now solely printed on the Epson. That is the only thing that the Epson is used for because it is set up to print on that seeded media um, it's slightly different to just normal card so it's a bit of a pain if I have to keep changing all the settings every time so I just wanted that to be a dedicated seed card printer um, and also it just goes hand in hand regular viewers will know that I have nothing but problems with the Canon printer I honestly don't know what's going on and if you compare the level of colours from the Epson, let me just have a look if I can get them together. From the Epson and the Canon, the Canon is this one here, and the Epson is this one here. And in my opinion, the Epson is just so much more vibrant. Um, you all know that I have spent many an hour trying to sort out the print quality on the Canon printer. Um, I have got it to a usable level and I am sure that anybody else looking at the prints and probably even on camera is not showing up as that noticeable. It's just again I, I really really love my Epson and I am now starting to regret going down the Canon route. I fear that I should have just perhaps saved up a little bit more um, for a few more months and gone with an Epson but I'm stuck with the Canon now, there's absolutely nothing I can do, um, I'm just going to have to try and make it work. So let's get these cut and have a look at the final products. They're finished. Don't they look great? I'm not quite sure if I prefer the plantable card so you get some beautiful flowers or the nice vibrant matte card print. I think they both look fantastic and I already have them up in my Etsy shop. They've been photographed and they're up there ready to buy. Have a look down in the comments and you will see the link to my store. Now I just need to work hard to get them up on my website and also the greeting cards companies that I'm part of such as Fortfall and Avocado. I need to get those all converted and sent over to them as well. Thank you very much for joining me today to see how I create my cards from start to finish. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, definitely hit the like button and drop me a little comment down below. If you're not already subscribed, then please, please hit that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? I am aiming to get 100 subscribers in 2021 and I am well on my way. So I would love it if you could join us and catch my videos. I upload every other week at the moment on a Monday. So thank you very much guys and I'll see you all next time. Bye!